My name's Joanna Catherine Scott. I'm a novelist and a poet. I live in Chapel Hill in North Carolina. A few years ago, I published a novel by the name of The Road from Chapel Hill. It was the story of a runaway slave from here based on a true story. Before I, it actually came out, the News and Observer, which is the local paper, ran an excerpt. And a couple of weeks later, I got a letter in the mail that was stamped, mailed at Central Prison. It was from a young man on death row who had read the excerpt and wanted to know what happened next. So I had my publisher send him a copy of the novel and a couple of weeks after that I had got another letter asking me if I would come and visit him because he felt that the story I was telling reminded him a great deal of his own life. I went across and I visited this young man and he turned out to be very sweet and very shy. We got on very well and I thought that that was the end of the, the uh, relationship. But as I was leaving he said, please would you come back and see me again. I discovered after I had got to know Hamza for a while that he had many, many, many talents. One of them is a talent for art. He's very good at drawing and painting. The other talent he has is um, as a teacher. He is a sort of unofficial teacher counsellor to the other men on death row. And um, gradually they started to come to him to ask him if he could find them pen pals through me. Many of these men, when they go on to death row, are abandoned by their families and friends and so they are totally alone and it is the most amazingly significant and important thing in their lives if they can have someone outside who will keep in touch with them and um, make them feel as though they're not just totally solitary in the world. This young man's name is Hamza and this is his story in a very brief form. It's called Death Row. He was an accidental package thrown away to float upon the surface of the world, an obstacle, a mouth to feed, the nuisance bastard of a rough man's wife, a punching bag, a dog to kick, a pale-skinned black boy, good for nothing but to shove aside, to mock, to stare at with that hard and silent, slow neck turning straight on stare, that sees so little and yet says so much. An ordinary story, his. The giddy highs of gasoline, the bull malt liquor and wild Irish rose, the swift onrush from foster home to foster home, group home to group, as though he traveled down a glass slick tunnel with the four harsh winds of fate exploding at his back his panicked hands flung out to seize whatever shone along the way, a box of doughnuts and an apple pie, a winter coat, a pair of shoes with solid soles, a pack of socks, a watch, a bike, until a handgun loaned out of his grandma's purse to a cat who called him homeboy, friend, slammed him spread-eagled like a cartoon character against the tunnel's silver-badged, blue-uniformed, dead end. And then the slave-like hobbles, lost child mugshots, and the prison label, black, ignoring half his ancestry, the stunned astonishment at what he had become. And after that, beneath a high, shrill, ever-burning light, the long, slow, dirge of days and years toward the needle's fatal, sympathetic slide into his arm. And a wonderful thing that has happened is that, in fact, two things have happened. One is that 
His lawyers have recently told me that he has become a transformed man because of my relationship with him and the relationship of my daughters and family. And also, the judge has granted him a new trial um, on grounds of a corrupt jury. Now, if we had not come together in this way through literature, this would not have happened because when I met him, he had no connection with his lawyers aside from a distant professional relationship. But because I took an interest in him and got to know his lawyers and made friends with them, brought his mother down from Maryland, took her out to lunch with them, uh, they realized what they probably already knew but were not operating on was that here was a good man who was worth working hard for and who I have not mentioned yet is actually one of the innocents on death row. We have had three um, men recently released from death row who have found to be innocent and this young man, Hamza, is another of them. So we are hoping that he will be the fourth. Thank you.